Welcome to Real Coaching Radio, the podcast for coaches by coaches. We are here to teach you how to get the most out of your clients and yourself. This is where beauty meets the beast, brains meet brawn, and science meets, well, bro science. Welcome to Real Coaching Radio. Welcome to today's episode of the podcast. Today, me and Mark discuss passion. We give an honest opinion on what it's like for your passion to be your job. It's kind of wrapped up in a bow and glorified when you see things on social media that if passion is the thing that you do for your job, that you will never work a day in your life. Do what you love and you will never work a day in your life's the same. Well, we give an honest opinion on that because there is a lot that goes into it. You could have to sacrifice things. You could have to make some pretty tough decisions. So today we just open up the conversation. We don't tell you how to find your passion. We don't tell you that your passion needs to be your job. What we do do is hopefully thought provoke. So without any further ado, let's get on with the episode. I reckon the passion talk is so so interesting because that is a very that is an outlier. We are outliers when it comes to having a passion which is also your job. So that's why I think the passion conversation is so interesting is because obviously you found your passion, I guess, young. Yeah, like I, well, yeah, I mean, saying that, like when I was really young, I used to, I loved drawing um, and I loved art and like was relatively creative with pictures and those kind of things. And like, you know, bear in mind, like I was a young teenager and probably even probably less than that. So like, you know, eight, nine, 10 to 12, 13, 14 years old. And I would have said that I probably wasn't at that age, like overly sporty. I did do sport, but it wasn't, it, you know, there were, I wasn't this nine year old, eight year old kid who was just really passionate, if you like, about sport. Like I, at that point in my life, I, I remember really enjoying art and really enjoying drawing. And I would probably say that for for an eight or nine year old, I I was probably all right at drawing a picture, but you know, I was still nine years old. (laughs) Um, And sport didn't really come to the forefront of something that I was really passionate about, if you like, until I probably hit 15, 16. And and even, yeah, probably around then, like, you know, we had a conversation before about how we kind of like got into fitness and those kind of things and I do remember like going to the gym and then during like during after school at the weekends and like I'd start to go to the gym with some of my friends and then I started to realize that I probably wanted to go to the gym more than what my friends did in terms of like there'd be some days where I'd ask them if they wanted to come to the gym um, and they they didn't want to go and I and I really wanted to go so I guess that's when I started to think like, you know, this is something that I, I really enjoy doing. Yeah. So this is, that's why it's interesting because when I was, when I was young, rugby was my passion. And that was, that was purely because my, my dad played rugby and rugby was kind of the, in our house the whole time. It was, everything was rugby. So from a young age, rugby was my passion. And it's not that I'd say that it, it's necessarily not now because I still like watching it and things like that, but it's not become the thing that the thing that I am most passionate about in my life currently and that's why it's interesting because I feel like and this is something which I've kind of been thinking about maybe our passions do you think they revolve around your values because in in also when I look back at my passions and things like that and I look back through my life like when you're young the probably values you have are just probably enjoying things. Do you know what I mean? The, the value you have is probably happiness, fun. Do you know what I mean? Freedom. Yeah. You have these, and, and, and as, you've, as your life's kind of evolved, because I look at people, friends of mine who are probably, and this is why it gets kind of interesting. I really love training. I really love going to the gym. I really love coaching people. I think, I think for me, when, when you look at the job and what I do, you'd say, oh, that person loves, loves working out, loves training. 
I really enjoy coaching people and I'm really, I guess you could say passionate about helping people. But I've got friends who really love the gym, really passionate about the gym, probably even more so than myself, yet they don't have it as a job. And that is maybe because they value other things more, like security, maybe money. Do, do, you, know what I'm, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think there's... Um, like often there's, there's a pressure put on people to kind of like follow their passion in terms of make, you know, you know, make, make your passion your career. You know, there's that saying around like, if you, if you love what you do, like you'll never work a day in your life. And like, and to a certain extent, I understand that and I get that. And I think we are in a really fortunate position that our passion is our career like we've managed to tie those two together but we are the minority like there's not that many people who who are able to do that and for some people that's not i don't think that's the right thing to do i think passion has to be so personal for some people just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean i don't think it means you have to make it your career well that's but but this is where people get it wrong we work very hard. Yeah. And that's the thing that people say is, yes, you, you, the, and I think people get mis, like, they get it confused a little bit. It's not that you will not work a day in your life. You said it. You work harder. Yeah. And you, you work harder because you're driven by something which is possibly more than, than what you've had in the past. Yeah, I think, like, if you, if you are passionate about something and it does become your career, you're probably more likely to do a better job because that passion is going to allow you to go above and beyond. You'll get up earlier. You'll stay later. You'll work, you'll work longer. You'll, you won't, I don't think you'll just um, like have that or oh, that would do attitude. But do you think that's something that people can, can inst- in, in, almost install in themselves when it comes to whatever their current job is, whatever their current circumstance is? And the reason I ask that is because if your passion, for example, you may not even have found it yet. And I don't think you necessarily need to find it. But what if you, because me, for example, I'm 23. What if your passion, and you're my age, what if your passion was maybe kids, but you haven't had kids yet? So maybe when you go to a job that you dislike, the thing that actually gets you to go there, the thing that makes you do the overtime, the thing that gets you to enjoy that job or to make the most of that job is being driven from something else being driven from your kids being driven externally yeah so it's not like it's not the direct driver of why why you're doing this job as an example yeah yeah and and i think i think that's a that's a really good point like you know you i know i know lots of people who are really passionate about I don't know, cars or holidays or whatever it might be. And they, they're, working, they're working in a job and in a career that potentially pays quite well. They don't necessarily enjoy it the way that I'm fortunate enough to enjoy what I do. But the, f- the freedom that it potentially gives them allows them to do other things that they're passionate about. So that's where, that's where it gets really confusing is that it's almost pushed now and it's almost glorified to be to be an entrepreneur to have your own business to do something you're passionate about to create something amazing and it's it's just not feasible for a lot of people it wasn't for me until i almost had no choice if that makes sense so when i decided to to change careers it was purely because the the ultimate factor i toyed with it for 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 a year and a half two years before i made the jump but the ultimate factor was i couldn't stay at my other job so because i couldn't stay at my other job i had two options and the option was i go and explore and see if what i am really passionate about is something that i could do for the rest of my life or do i just go and carry on doing my job and then just continue to have my passion the gym as my escape because that's, that's something which I pondered on and something I questioned was, what do I do when I make my passion my career and then I need a break from my career? Where is my escape then? What do I, how do I come away from that? 
And if I'm being completely honest, I'm not sure yet. I don't know how. I still love training and I still really do find it helps me in, in so many ways. If I train, I'm more productive. I'm, I, I, I think clearer. I'm probably a lot, of, a lot nicer to be around. And it is still kind of an escape. But that means when I want a complete cut off, when you, when you leave work and you just leave everything at your desk or you leave everything in your van and you, you leave it and it's, it's, it's there, you don't have to come back to it. Whereas we constantly are in it. Yeah. Is it, is, is it that? Is it that glorified? Is it that good? And that's something that it's just people forget about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that's a really good point that people, people probably seem to think that, you know, if you do something that, and take coaching as an example, like people get into fitness because, and this, and one, this is one of the reasons why I got into coaching. People get into it because they, they love, they love training themselves and they, they love the gym. And, and I, I saw something, I can't remember where I saw it now, but I saw something online the other day, I think it was on Instagram, and there was, um, there was a quote around saying kind of, like, your love, and it was specific towards fitness coaching, like, your love for training isn't necessarily going to make you a good coach. Like, there has to be a love and a passion for wanting to help people. That's where people get it wrong. Yeah, and, and I think... People sometimes come into our space and think like, I love going to the gym, like I love training. So I'm going to get into coaching and I want to be a really good coach. And then like some of the stuff that you're not necessarily told when you first start in the fitness industry is like, you're going to be at work at probably 5.30, 5 a.m. in the morning. You're potentially still going to be at work at 10 p.m. at night. And, and, And that's the reason that I feel like some industries are specifically you said it yourself you probably do need to be a little bit more passionate or you need to have some reason for doing that yeah absolutely like you know that whole scenario around what i just said in terms of you know if you if you do something that you love you'll never work a day in your life in terms of what you said like yeah we work damn hard and that's the and that's the thing that when when i leave the gym and i go home i'm programming i'm creating new things for my clients to to kind of have as as guides or as mm-hmm. little bits of nutrition info and things like that so there isn't a time i don't think but is the are you going home and doing that stuff like because you're passionate about it well this is where it gets this is why it's a big question because i uh, it's ultimately working out the driving factor for 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 why i'm doing it and that's why I say is passion, does passion have, when we said does passion have to be your job? <laughs> Probably not in, 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 all, in all seriousness. We're very fortunate that it is. But then is, is, is fitness my passion? Is training my passion? Or is my passion wanting to help people? Is my passion wanting to stop people from feeling lost? Because that for me as a coach is probably the, the, where you should be in the, in the sense of, your driving factor should not be the fact that you love doing bicep curls. The, the driving factor should probably be, well, there's a lot of people out there who really are, for me, have body image issues. There's a lot of people out there who relate their kind of how they look to being the, the value they put on their own life type thing. And that's something I want to stop. So that's something I want to, to combat. Yeah. And I think, I think something else to go along those lines of passion is that you your your passion needs let let your passion evolve i think like don't so and what i mean by that is kind of you know don't necessarily like just pigeonhole this passion of as an example kind of you know i loved training when i was younger so my passion was the gym my passion was training my passion was exercise and that's why i got into the fitness industry now all of that is still my passion but if you take everything that I do, the thing that I'm probably most passionate about in my, you know, these many job roles that I have within the fitness industry at the moment, in terms of where my career is going, is teaching new coaches to be either get into the fitness industry and be a coach or 
to upskill and become better coaches. Whereas if you'd have asked me 10, 12, 15 years ago, is my passion to become a teacher? I would have said no. Well, that, that's, I, yesterday I spent the whole morning chasing a bloke around in a field with a camera, creating content. And when I first got into this, would I hell have thought I was going to be doing that? And, you, and that's, it needs to be a growth-minded, yeah. a growth-minded approach when it comes to your things you're passionate about. The thing you're passionate about could be the thing that gets you into something, but that could be the thing that holds you back. Your greatest strength can be your greatest weakness. Look at, you said it, bodybuilders. Yeah. How, how one single-minded is their training approach? Yeah. And it's not necessarily the best one. Yeah, but it, that, that's, and I think that's, yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good point because I think if you let, if, if you try and, f- you, you know, you find this passion and you un- take, say it's training, you find that your passion is training and then you really pigeonhole this passion into it's just training and you don't see it as it's training, but there's multiple facets that could come into training. Like you're probably going to end up falling out of love with it because you're trying to force it. So take, you know, take everything in fitness. Like if people are really, really passionate about bodybuilding, most, pretty much everything else to do with fitness, like they disregard. Yeah. If you're really, really passionate about CrossFit, everything else to do with fitness, people disregard. Yeah. Like bodybuilding and CrossFit are probably the two biggest things in fitness, quote unquote, if you like at the moment. And the, the amount of arguments that I see on social media around, oh, bodybuilding has to be the only way to train. Like you can only build muscle if you do bodybuilding. Yeah. Like people are like, you know, I'm a CrossFitter, I'm fitter than you. Like, and it's all, it's all like really, really closed-minded. Whereas can you just see fitness and take a small step back and open your vision and be a little bit more open-minded? Because if you're really closed-minded about, you know, our oh, bodybuilding is the only way to train, CrossFit is the only way to train, are you going to end up potentially doing more damage to either your own business and you know you know n n equals one right like if if you've had a positive experience with something a lot of people generally tend to force that experience on you know by my diet like that that's it got me a six pack but that's where especially in the fitness industry just because someone's got their body to a certain point doing a certain way does not mean that that approach is going to be the perfect one for you. And I'm talking to someone who's maybe looking for a coach right now. So if you're looking for someone to take you through personal training and to learn, you have to, obviously, you may see someone and be like, but that's kind of my goal or that's, that's something which inspires me, which is great. But you have to ask yourself, is that person understanding that there are so many different approaches because as soon as i get a client come in as soon as there is a brand new person on the gym floor it's all about how that person can fall in love with fitness it's not about how that person has to fall in love with what i love because that's the that's the bit which gets confusing and that's the trap that i've fallen into is that i i used to say um, I, I can't remember where I read this or where I, I, I saw it on social media or I was listening to a podcast about um, one of the, a coach that I really respect in the industry was saying that when he writes programs or when he, when he trains people, it's 80% what's good for them, 20% what they like. So then I put that into my own kind of idea and I was like, well, if it's 80% what's good for them, they need to do the X, Y, and Z because I know that's good for them. Blah, blah, blah. And then 20% what they like. Well, we spoke about before, adherence just hit the floor. And it's more likely to be the other way around. It's more likely to be 80% what they do enjoy and 20% well, what's, what's actually probably good for them. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to strike that balance, haven't we, haven't we, of kind of, you know, what do they need and what, what do they want? Exactly. Um, and I think, like, so, so if you are a coach or you're thinking about getting into coaching, like, don't take some of this sort of stuff out of context because I, I do think it's important to kind of, 
as a coach, you need to find out probably what motivates you, what drives you, and what is it that you are passionate about. So if it is bodybuilding, if it is functional fitness, if it is, I don't know, gymnastics, if it's anything, whatever it might be, like if that's your motivator and that's your passion, that's probably likely to guide the direction that you're going to go in in the fitness industry. And that's, that's not wrong to chase that. But all we're trying to say is kind of be, don't necessarily disregard other methods of training because pretty much all of these methods, you know, our training shouldn't be governed by methods. Our training should be governed by principles. And all of these different methods, if you like, are governed by principles. So if you take like bodybuilding, you take functional fitness, you take gymnastics, like there's a level of specificity to all of those. There's a level of progressive overload to all of those. So, and they're the principles that need to guide your training and guide your coaching. And then the method that you choose, as you've just said, really needs to be like, what is it that either you or your client is going to adhere to? That's, but that's the, that's the main bit is the, and this goes for passions yourself. It's what is the thing that's going to help you? What's the thing that you are actually going to stick to? What's the thing that's going to, help you kind of enjoy the journey enjoy the process and that's why i asked at the start is our do our passions evolve with our values because my training approach my coaching approach definitely has evolved with the amount of knowledge i've gained and so has what i wanted to do with my life i made the decision to change completely completely from 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 fitting blooming cctv cameras to coming into this space and the reason the reason for it for me was because i want to help people I want to help people achieve their goals and just feel better about themselves and stop people from having body image as such a big priority on their list. Yes, why I think functional fitness is brilliant because it is a lot about performance. Don't get me wrong, I'm driven by the way I look. I think a lot of us are, but the the reason I got into it was was passion of helping people to to try to not be so fixed on this. And that's why this growth mindset when it comes to your passions is very important. That's why being a coach in whatever, whatever aspect, or if, you, if, you, if it's in the fitness industry, if it's, if it's any other part of coaching, you cannot try and fit the, the, the client. You cannot try and fit the person. You cannot try and fit yourself into, into maybe a system that doesn't work for you. And that goes for, the, that goes for finding a passion. That goes for needing a passion. Just because some people are born to be entrepreneurs and, and, and hustle in business and get up at 4 a.m. and go to bed at 10 a.m. and all they've done is work all day, doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Does not mean that that's the, the path that you have to follow. And that's the, that's the thing with this is don't try and jam, jam a round peg in a square hole type thing. Try yeah. and find what fits for, for individual needs, your own needs, but as well as your clients' needs, your friends, your family, what fits individually and, and, and don't listen to, to the external, if that makes sense. Don't listen to the things you see on social media. Yeah, and, and I think kind of if you're listening to this and you're, you know, probably someone probably like closer to your age or maybe even cl- closer to my age, like it, it, who knows? Like, but so uh, the point is kind of, is that it, there's a question around is there a right time where you have to find this passion because again one of the thing that we see driven around kind of passion is sort of what should you know you're you're in year i don't know when when i was there it was like year 10 year 11 i don't know if that's changed now at school but like year 10 year 11 like you're you're, you're doing work experience you're trying to you're applying for jobs like you're figure you you you're it's kind of like not put necessarily pushed on you but it's you're leaving school just like right well what are you going to do now like what's the rest of your life going to look yeah. like yeah and should me. you should you know at that point when you leave school like what it is that you want to do now i was for, i'm fortunate that i've pretty much worked in fitness in one way or another um my whole life but I think that's a real minority. I don't think, because I can tell you now, like when I was, when I was 18, 19, 20 to 25, probably to 30, like, you know, I thought I had life figured out. 
and I had, had no clue what I was doing. Yeah. Like, when it comes to, to life, and I had no idea. As you take my brother as an example, my brother kind of worked a few jobs, and he won't mind, he won't mind me talking about this, but like he, worked, he did a few different jobs, and he went to university much later in life because he was this, and I remember having a conversation with him. He was this, like 20, I don't even know how old he was when he started going to uni, but he's maybe like 24, 25. And, you know, it, it, that's kind of like this gap between a 16 year old kid that's leaving school and a 24 year old, like spending that amount of time, like not necessarily really knowing what he wants to do. And now he's 29, he's a physiotherapist and loves what he does. And I've never seen, and like, we're coming back to that word again, but I've never seen him be so passionate about, about something that he's passionate about when it comes to like physiotherapy. Well, you have to look at that. You, if, if someone's going to leave, leave school at 16 and make a decision on their life at 16, your brother's waited eight years, so half that time again, yeah? Mm. So he's basically, he, he's, he, uh, at that point, he's had 16 years of experience. He's now got 24 years of experience and probably... Because everyone says, as soon as you leave school, you, you join the real world, right? Yeah. And the real world being the working world and, 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 and all the stresses uh, <laughs> and stuff that go into it. Well, that's the thing. Not experiencing different things is going to limit what your passion is. And that's, if you explore different things, if you do rubbish jobs, if you work out what, what do I, what not, not necessarily what do I like, because sometimes that's hard. What don't I want to do? What's yeah. the things that I really yeah, don't right. enjoy? Because that can push you in a direction to make you go, well, maybe that's where, where I want to go. And that's why you've said it earlier on in this podcast that it doesn't necessarily need to be your job. You're very fortunate if it is, but exploring these different things and exploring these different avenues I always, I've always said it kind of exploring things that I enjoy can sometimes give me my, my passion. Exploring what, what, what actually do I enjoy? What, what, what do I get fun out of? And, and can that be a job? And if the answer is no, then that's something I do on the weekend and on the evenings. If, if it's piano, if it's, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be your job. It's, that's the... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not here to tell you that like, your, your passion has to, you have to make your passion a job. That's not the idea of this. It's just a conversation around like what, what is passion and probably hopefully some thought provoking conversations and something for you to think about kind of. So it, like, again, that's a really good question. Like does your passion have to be your job? And like the answer is no. Like I think passion has to be really, really personal to, to each individual. And again, Like passion gets dressed up to be this thing that gives you like fire in your belly and you gets you out of bed in the morning and like keeps you up till four or five o'clock in the morning working and kind of all of these other fancy extravagant things like it's on your mind 24 seven like but we are we live in a world of like massive extremes at, at the moment. And again, like passion gets dressed up to be this huge extreme thing. And, and I think it is like an, an extreme fondness. Like we said, like with a definition earlier in this podcast, like it probably is an extreme fondness, but that doesn't mean like you're potentially doing it every waking hour and then dreaming about it whilst you're asleep. And if you are, that's probably not healthy. So you want to take a, take a different approach to it. And that's why you... The, the approach of being, I, self-awareness is something which I really drive home on at the moment. And it's being aware of your view, being aware of your thoughts, being aware of the things you do and say, and being aware of the impact that, that the things you do have on your life. So is this passion something which really helps me? Because I know for a fact, sometimes if, 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 if I've got maybe to go and, and maybe I've been working since half four in the morning and I've got a client starting at eight or eight at night do I really want to be there at that point and and that's the that's the question I'm tired but of course I'm going to be there because it's my job doesn't mean I'm not passionate about it hours throughout that day but at that eight o'clock client I probably do still want to go home 
It doesn't, and, and, and that's not a problem. That's not something you need to be ashamed about for, for wanting different things other than your passion. Like, it's not this thing that's going to drive you every single minute of every single day. Because if it does, then you're probably falling short on other aspects of your life. As, as, as adults especially, we've got to juggle so many different things, your career, your social life, your family, your partner. You, you, you've got to juggle all of these things, nutrition, training, and keeping these, these balls in the air or these plates spinning is very difficult. A lot of times, if our focus is on one thing way too much, we're going to fall short somewhere else. And we see people that are majorly passionate. We see people that are majorly driven. You look at you look at people like The Rock. You look at bodybuilders who have have attained this almost unattainable kind of goal, unattainable dream that they they they've drove they've drove themselves to get. And we look at that and think that's that's what I should be doing. That's where I should be. Well, is that is that something which which is really going to help you? Because that person who has such a great physique, or the rock who gets up at half four and works, like I'm not, I'm just asking these questions because I don't know. Are they going to be succeeding in every single part of their life? Because we look at them and we think they're really successful at one thing. They're going to be successful at something else. And we look at we look at passion as being someone who's passionate about everything. That that's not necessarily true. Yeah, so I think I think that's a good, like, yeah, that's good because I think like is there again, and this is just a question, like, is there is there a line where I mean, there's that saying of kind of like find what you love and let it kill you, right. like, you know, is is there a line where passion becomes an obsession and then it ends up going too far, and like you say, you're either it's having a negative impact on on your lifestyle and anything else so take like i remember when i was younger and i read um johnny wilkinson's autobiography yeah i've read that one yeah and he was you know obviously he's mega passionate about rugby or certainly was mega passionate about rugby and there were there were times where after training he would do so i think i think it was something like after most training sessions he would have to kick 50 goals off his right leg and then 50 off his left leg and if he missed one he started again and he didn't leave until he went 50 straight 50 straight and i remember reading this one this one section where it's kind of like he was doing that and then he missed a dinner with with his wife and i think his wife was just like waiting at this restaurant table by herself and he was just still on this field like kicking kicking balls and it's kind of is that is that a passion that's I'm not going to say is it a passion that's gone too far because obviously I think I think if you're going to go to that level that extreme level like elite sport then there probably needs to be something that's a bit more of a driving factor than just passion if you like like that's where we do see these extremes because they're in the, these extreme scenarios but is there a time based off what you've just said like in your own life where passion can become so all consuming yeah and yeah. i think it can johnny wilson kicked the kick the last kick do you know what i mean the, the 2003 world cup he won that and probably all those years of practice led up to that point but we look at that and think that moment of glory yeah the work that went in behind the scenes 50 on his left 50 on his right the work that's gone into that is that something you yourself can do yeah it's very appealing when you see the World Cup, that, that, that drop goal. Yeah, but what you don't see are the sacrifices that he's made previously. To, the to arguments with his wife. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why I think it's a really interesting conversation to work out, is passion, is this driving factor something that we all need? And I think something else that you see on... And maybe social, like, so we all know that, like, social media is a highlight reel. Like, it's not people's real life. And people, people might look up to other people on social media. And I think that's, that's not a bad thing to have, like, to have role models and have people that, look up, that you look up to and people that motivate you and inspire you. But you might, people might look up to other people and see this highlight reel and think, oh, this person's really passionate about what they do, and they seem to just have their whole life figured out, and they seem to have it all in a row, and you know they're ticking all these boxes every single day. 
But what they might not see is like they probably don't get it right every day. No, definitely don't get it right every day. I the 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 reason passion can be such a negative thing is because it if it can become obsessive, if it can become addictive, then it it gets to that point of never being satisfied. And 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 that's because if you're driven by a passion, if you're driven by something and and that passion could be could, could be wanting to be famous for example that passion could be wanting to be desired that passion could be wanting to be known and you could be driven by something which really is quite negative and and that's why i think the passion conversation is so interesting is because what is it that 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 makes it so glorified it's these people who get these good moments the johnny wilkinson kick the the rock with his whatever 45 million followers or whatever he's got in the life that he lives but the the work that goes into that and the passion that's probably driven behind that is probably again probably something a lot deeper than just that 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 yeah. that one want to oh, i like fitness or i like rugby there's something else there which which kind of drives it and i think that it, it's it's what is the cost of ambition yeah Oh, I, I, think there's a, I think there's a big cost to, to ambition, if I'm honest with you. Um, you know, long days, long nights, potentially an impact on social interactions with friends and family. Like, and and, and, I, and I, I wholeheartedly believe that because there's, I would see myself as a relatively ambitious person and a relatively driven person. And I know for a fact, like, there's things that I've sacrificed in, in my life. Like, so for, for example, like, this morning, like, we've come, it's, it's early in the morning, and we're, film, we're recording this podcast, and kind of, you know, I, I didn't see my son this morning. Uh, I will see him tonight before he goes to bed, and I will spend, and I will make sure, and, but again, like, that's, that's the trade-off, and like, I will make sure that I go home at a decent time so that I can spend a few hours with him today, this afternoon, before he goes to bed. But I didn't see him this morning. So that's why, that's why whatever you're trying to, whatever the thing is that drives you, whatever your passion is, and again, it could be getting up, going to a rubbish job that you maybe dislike purely for the fact that you need the money to be able to put food on the table for your family or to go on the holidays that you really do love doing. You maybe love traveling. But the, the, the sacrifices are always there. And, and, and it's the trade-off of, of, of the reward you get afterwards because, because maybe the, 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 the thing, that you, this thing that, you sa- that you sacrifice now is, is the long-term reward the, the the bigger thing and the more important thing is something that is actually going to get to, to be there and that's the that's the thing that you need to sometimes kind of sacrifice you look at people who's good with money people who are good with money because they understand the sacrifice in the now yeah. for the future yeah i i think i think that's a really really good point like this delayed gratification of of what you're good and this delayed reward of like the work that you're putting in now like in terms of like I like my 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 goal my ambition is you know I'm when I'm I don't know in my late forties early fifties like I want to be at a point where I can afford to do less and I'm not really having to work anywhere near as much that I'm doing now but and I, th- I think like sometimes we we can go through life thinking like it's all sunshine and rainbows and it, it, and it's not like you've got to if you want this freedom later on in your life and freedom can look very different to other people that can be i don't know it could be financial freedom it could just be freedom to ha- like with time depends on, i guess it depends on what you value as an individual but you, you know, there's a reason why when we when we first started our business like i was working on christmas day i was editing videos on christmas day the the day the website launched i was working at 3 a.m i was working at 4 a.m and kate was doing the same like we were sat on this sofa like didn't didn't see in the new year i was sat on a sofa like on a laptop she was sat next to me on a laptop and we worked for the best part of four or five hours solid into the night without saying a word to each other and 
like these are these are the deposits that you're putting in now so that later in life like you can get those rewards back it's like saving money isn't it like you know yeah. you you put 10 quid away you put 20 quid away every week whatever it might be and you do that for years on end What's, what's there at the end? And that's the same that goes where if, if you're someone who's into your training, if you're a coach, if you're someone who, who has some certain goals, the, the, the 10 minutes a day that you find or that you see as pointless, the, the little half hours that you spend working out it, when, when you've only got a half hour or the little, the little 20 minutes that you spend reading, the, the, the little things, the little deposits that you put down, over years they do make a difference. And they do build up and they do give you that. But understand that there is that initial sacrifice. Yeah. And you have to, it, it's, it's, a, it's a choice of choose your poison. And I think it's, the, it's, a, it's a choice of choose your poison when it comes to passion. Because passion, the thing that drives you and th- this, this ambition to, to have something which is potentially more than what you've had or more than what, you, what you've currently got does cost something. And that cost of ambition can be your time, it can be your social life, it can be some of the things that maybe you see value in. So maybe don't look at passion as something which can be a positive. Look at it as it can be a negative as well. But for you, which is the biggest factor? Is the biggest factor in your life your family? So is the biggest factor in your life spending time with your, with your family currently? Or is your biggest factor in your life getting to a point where in 10 12 years time you can spend unlimited amounts of time with your family because you've put the work in now what is what is the the poison that you are going to take when it comes to your passion are you going to spend long nights miss meals with your wife to go and kick goals to get the to to, to win the world cup what is the thing that's going to be for you because i couldn't do that i wouldn't do that but i know for a fact i'll put work in to do something i am passionate about because I know the reward that it will give me and I know the reward that it will help other people. Does not mean that's something that, that everyone needs to do. Does not mean that's something that, that you yourself need to do. And I kind of want to leave you with, with just a few questions, if I'm honest with you. I guess, the, I, guess the, I guess the first question is, what are you willing to sacrifice to get what you want? And is that sacrifice going to be worth it? Now, this whole conversation is not us telling you how to find your passion. This, this, this whole conversation is not us explaining that passion's the best thing. This whole conversation is just to thought provoke, to make you understand, is, is passion worth it? Is the thing that I'm chasing worth it? Is there something out there that, that, that is, is there for me? Is there a passion that I just haven't explored yet? And the passion conversation is so interesting. The other question I want, to, I want to kind of leave you with is, does your passion have to be your job? And kind of see if it's something which is feasible because is, is passion and, and your job going to take over your life and you're going to have to sacrifice other things? You have to ask yourself the, the, that question again. What are you willing to sacrifice? And I'm going to leave you with that. So thank you once again. For, for tuning in. This has been Real Coaching Radio. If you want to find us, then you can find us at Mark Origin Series or at Hack the Body, Hack the Mind on Instagram. And just remember that passion can help drive us, but passion can also be the thing that kind of destroys us. Your greatest strength can be your greatest weakness. Thank you very much. We will see you on the next one. I suppose following on from this, if you do have any questions, if you do like this episode, if you want to get in touch for, for any reason, then you can head to our Instagram page. So Real Coaching Radio has an Instagram page and you can ask us questions there. You can DM us. We will talk about things on the podcast if there's any topics you want us to go over. Or maybe you want to email in. Maybe you've got an example of how your passion destroyed you or, or how your passion is the, the thing that drives you every day. 
Maybe you just have any questions, then you can email into us, info at realcoachingradio.co.uk. So once again, I will leave you with that one question. What are you willing to sacrifice to get the thing you want the most? Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening to us talk. It, it means a lot. If you do like the podcast, please give us a five-star review on iTunes. It is greatly appreciated. Um, share this with your friends and family as well. If there is someone who wants to get into fitness, if there is someone who wants to get into coaching or maybe someone who is a coach, then you can learn a lot, probably from Mark especially. He's been in this industry a lot longer than I have and his knowledge is second to none. So so if you do know someone who wants to learn more or maybe yourself, then, then please share this, share this with people and continue to listen. Thank you so much. We will see you on the next one.